there's a chance there for Thompson to grab this one. Taps it on, straightens up, fires at the goals. He's put it through to put him 24 points in front of the first goal. Thompson following his man down. Kick's not bad, not bad at all. Very good. And there's the siren, victory for the Bombers. Boston's AFL Premiership Jimmy Bartell and Matthew Lloyd, we welcome tonight Mark Bomber Thompson back to Footy Classified. Bomber, great to have you there, mate. What, uh, tell me when you when you look at those highlights, what's the emotion that you feel? I actually feel okay because um, I haven't watched them for a long, long time. And I did a podcast the other week. Um, it's called Ankle Saw, named after me. <laughs> and they showed edits of my first game, which I've never really seen. I don't think ever. Yeah. And they got my name wrong. They thought I was Roger Merritt. You know, I was a, <laughs> much like Roger. But uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was it was good there to see them, and it was good tonight. Yeah, it's, uh... Bomber's with us tonight because uh, in the last couple of weeks, the AFL have announced that he will be presenting at the AFL Grand Final the Jock McHale Medal, of which you've been good enough to have a couple of engine neck mate over the journey. Pretty good effort for you. But uh, can I ask you this? When did you decide to forgive footy? for anything that you thought was going on and when did you decide maybe to forgive yourself and come back into the fold? Oh, it's been a while, Ed. It's, uh, when did it happen? 2013, 12, 12, so yeah. it's a long time. And it's only recently I've sort of, like I've always, it's, it's hard because it's, yeah, I, got, I was really aggressive, you know, I was really defensive and I was really trying to sort of, you know, honour on your name, get your name um, cleared and everything, cleared and everything else. Yeah. else. So it's, yeah. But then it goes to the point where you just lose interest in footy, which I did, and now I'm starting to sort of come back and, and I'm, you know, just time, time heals everything. So, and it's all healed for me now. I still talk about it, it's still there. I can't even get rid of it, but it's not as if I hang on to it now. I just let it go. Just, uh, it and is what it is. And it seems like you're stepping in. The AFL have invited you to uh, present the, the award, but you've stepped into it and sort of opened the door for people. What's the next step for you? Is there any, any bombers or anybody around the place that you want to just catch up with and say, right, let's get on with the rest of our life? No, not really. I, uh, I, look, I haven't got a grudge anywhere, so I don't really... Uh, uh, I, I don't sort of... Like, I still love Essen. I still love all the people there. Um, so it's, it's not a problem with me with football. I'm not, I don't want to roll in football, but yeah. um, I'm happy just to sort of watch it and play a light role and show people that I have forgiven and, and uh, maybe just tie in then. I'm not with the AFL, just uh, to say that we're back on track. Just roll on. Just, yeah, just, roll on. Just with that uh, reflection piece, and you get the phone call uh, to come back in the fold, is, it's, uh, the, is there something you go back to that makes you feel happy about the game again? And as you said, not be so hard against it, but just get a real passion for it again. What's it like working on a board, Jimmy? Is it hard work? Does it, it takes a lot of time. It does. It does. <laughs> is it emotional, passionate? It, very emotional. But do you feel that emotion again, like you used to when nah. you're a coach and a player? No, nah, I don't watch it the same way. You know, when you're involved, Lloyd, you know yourself. You're like you, you sort of watch it from a player's point of view, and and um, I knew every player from the opposition what the, what to expect from them. Almost, you know, that's how well you know them. You can't just you just can't do it watching a game of footy. So you're sort of watching it as a supporter. That's all. Um, so, no, I won't get back in football. Hey, Bomb, it's been a, a challenging and, and tough 10 years for you um, since you left the Essendon Football Club. What was the lowest point for you in that time? I reckon when I, not I heard that Hurdy tried to take his life was, uh, was probably the one. You know, that was, uh, that's what really... So why does the game need to get to this point, you know, really? when I mean, all adults are involved. Um, you know, you've got the law involved, everything else, and that they should have just been able to handle it themselves. But uh, that's a bit of a wake-up call for everyone, I reckon. That was a wake-up call for me. So don't take it so serious. Yeah. What did the game do to you? Did the game, did the game and coaching bring pressures on and, and change your life? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the sort of, it's the sort of job that's fully absorbed. And, uh, like, you sort of, you get time off, obviously, but when you're got time off, you still haven't got time off, you're still thinking mm. and you, you never really get away from the game. Pretty much as a player too, you know, the sacrifices you make 24-7, aren't they really? Mm. You know, with your diet and, yeah. uh, you know, social life gets altered and everything else. So, 
Uh, yeah, this game is coach, it's, uh, it really is a full on. And I had 11 years, I had great years, so um, I'm happy with my time. And, and put, on, put that on top of the playing career. So it's, all my adult years up until I finished coaching was, was totally committed to football. Mm. Yeah. What are your relationships like now with those people that were once so important to you and, and football? James Heard for one. Yeah. Oh, who do you know, mates? And uh, we don't talk to each other that often, but we, we, you know, like we've had each other's back and we're going to continue to do that and uh, support each other. Well, I'm not a sort of bloke that hangs around sort of too many people. I'm, I'm a bit mm. of a loner and a bit of an introvert. Um, so I just like to sort of muck around and just uh, do things on my own. So I don't sort of tie myself up in being seen public or, or yeah. do sort of too many things. With the passing of time, which you've already alluded to, and the perspective that you've now got, which is different to that yeah. time, yeah. is there a moment that, that maybe you would like to have again to reshape what happened beyond it? Maybe I'd like to get to that second day of the tribunal hearing on time. But <laughs> I really didn't want to go. So uh, I turned up an hour. The night it all went down when. The night after, like, we had the full day, and then the next day we were supposed yeah. to turn up at 8.30 or something in the morning. Because you I... weren't going to accept that finding, were you, at that stage? It was all a shock to me, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the night before the announcement came out, I don't know why we're talking about this, I probably shouldn't, but anyway. The uh, night before it announced, I got rung by Paul and said, oh, You're not getting charged. I said, Well, Good, you know, didn't think I would. Run by who, sorry? Paul, Paul Little. Paul Little, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he said, oh, no, you're getting charged. It um, looks like you're, you're, you're off the hook and, uh, you know, everything's right to go. So I mm. said, oh, that's good. Mm. And I didn't expect to get charged anyway. The next day I got a call saying I had been charged and I, the AFL wanted the name of my lawyer. I said, I haven't got a lawyer. Yeah. Um, that was a bit of a shock. Mm. But you, you, you've, as you say, you've now moved on from that and no... Ill will to anyone or? No, I can't. You can't have yeah. ill will, you know. We're lucky to be alive, you know. It's uh, a lot going on in the world and, uh, you know, we're all getting a bit older, so that's another thing that you have to take into account. So, ah, just get on with it and just... Um, who would I have to make up with? Andrew Dimitri, if I seen Andrew, I'd say later to him, you know. Gil McLaughlin, same. It doesn't it, it, We're going to see them on grand final day. Andrew? Yeah. yeah. They'll all be in the room. OK. Um, so when you walk in... I'll, 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 let me... I'll be Post normal, Ed. I'll just go in and say hello. You there won't say be any big Stim. bus. Come. Bring your camera there, but you won't see anything, nothing for the news. No, wait, no <laughs> let me ask you this. Um, Peter McKenna, when he presented the 2010 <clears throat> Premiership to Collingwood, um, said it re-energised his life. That uh, he had almost, in his, his words, said he, he used to be Peter McKenna. And he said after being out there again and feeling part of it and, and even getting rid of the demons of the, the premierships that Collingwood lost, he just felt so much better. And his family said to me as well that that was a pivotal moment for him. Are you hoping that in walking into that room full of all those people and politicians, um, because you and I met when we were both teenagers, and even then you were pointed out to be, he's going to be a, a superstar of this bloke, he's going to be a captain of Essendon, look at the way he trains. You were always Mark Bomber Thompson. This might give you the chance to beat Mark Bomber Thompson again. And I suppose the supplementary question is: Has it been hard, sort of looking at shadows walking down the street the last few years? Not at all, Ed. I've yeah. got. I can look in the mirror and, and know that what I've done was uh, ethical and everything else. Okay, so I, that's the most important thing, person you have to please is yourself. Yeah. And I've never really had any self doubts about what what I did. So. And and this, do you think this there'll be a positive come out of this? I won't be the Peter Mechanic like, but uh, yeah. McKenna like, but. It might, uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably not, you know, Mark Thompson, it's, it's yeah. just, uh, I, I don't uh, have to get back to Mark Thompson, I'm Mark Thompson, so it's not, I'm not looking forward to it doing anything to me personal, personality wise, just go there, enjoy a game of football and, and shake the hand of the man who's just joined the Premiership Coaches Club, so. Uh, Bomber, another positive has been your impact on the game and we're not just saying this because you're here, you had a, a massive impact on myself and, and Lloydie, but the amount of former students, if you will, former players and coaches that are involved in the game and we've got a big list of them, a number of the assistant coaches um, at Geelong have gone on to be senior coaches, There's, we've just got a, a list there, of course, pretty much all Premiership teammates have been either assistant coaches, senior coaches or all footy managers. Do you, do you look at those sort of names when they do pop up the occasional time you hear on radio or TV and, and smile that you've had a huge impact on a lot of guys in yeah, our football career? You keep your eye on Jimmy. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever listen to me? Oh, I did all the <laughs> time. It was the smartest thing <laughs> yeah, I did. I, say, I used to say that, look boys, if you become a successful player, you'll have a career in football. Yep. And uh, that list there sort of 
just verifies that, doesn't it? Hey, Bomber, you're one of the great football brains, and I know that everyone who, even your time at Essendon, when you coach them, just at the end there, I know Joe Watson says you, he just was blown away by your football knowledge, and you said this on Footy Classified about the Bombers ten years ago. You know, hmm. like everyone looks at Essendon as if there's this great club. And I walked into Essendon, and I thought we're not a very good club. So there's a lot of areas we need to fix up. Now let's get on with this job. So, so we weren't ready for... So you're talking board administration wasn't good enough? Not, not, not just blaming the board, yeah. but the board, the, this level, this level, the football department, every part of how we're doing things wasn't up to a level that uh, was going to get us back up in the eight top four, you know, preliminary finals, grand finals, premierships. So you said that and you were bang on the money then. And there's been a lot of change in the last 12 months. But what you watched this year, can you see anything changing? And what would you be, your advice be for the Bombers? Um, you hope every year there's change, with, yeah. well, especially when there's a new coach. And I think uh, Brad did have a little bit at the start, but it looks like Essendon's a club that absorbs the people. Absor they absorb the people coming in to try and not change the culture. Where it should be the other way around a bit. It should be the new people come in, do change the culture yeah. um, because it probably needs to be fixed. And uh, I'm not sure whether it's fixed or not. I don't know, know enough yeah. of the people around the football club, but. Uh, um, that's what needs to happen. It needs to just uh, start respecting the game, respecting the game, and looking at other clubs and seeing what they do and whether they how they stack up against them. You know, you'd probably find them not that well. Mm. Back to Geelong, where you coached yeah. this man to two of the the three flags that, that he got. 2022, there was a nice little symmetry to it with the overhang of your time there with Hawkins and and Selwood. Did that produce a, a special feeling for you? Well, I did for uh, Tommy. He was all Australian, wasn't he, too? Yeah. <laughs> can't believe he's all Australian, but um, yep. it's a great effort. Um, just Yeah, just the two old boys that, that came in as young men, and uh, they came in, their timing was perfect, wasn't it? You know, Selwood's a, the most sort of winning games, win-loss ratio probably players they've had, because played the most games for Geelong, captain for a record amount of years, premiership captain, so outstanding careers. Um, did you feel a part of the Cats even after you, you left? Geelong Football Club is a great football club. Yeah, it's a great football club. It's uh, nice people there. They treat their people well, and and that's a reflection of Ryan Cook and and um, Frank Costa. But it also goes longer than that and deeper. You know, they uh, the, remember all of the, the, the who's the recruiting manager? The, uh, Rosie. No, the other guy before him. The uh, oh, um, Brit Bill McMaster. Bill McMaster was a nice yeah. guy. You know, yeah. like the, the whole club's full up with nice people, and the town's a nice town. You know, and so you can sort of uh, you got to really respect that. And I really like Geelong. Lordy, can I ask you? Mm. What do you think about this bloke from an Essendon point of view? Well, Bomber was my first ever captain. So I walked in, Bomber, I don't know if you know that, but 1995 was my first season. It was your last season. And, and I, I learnt uh, what it took to be uh, play at a big club. Uh, the expectations were, the training standards, the way you treat people, the way you carry yourself. And Bomber actually gave me, you wouldn't remember this, a nice spray nice and early around <laughs> yeah. that. And, uh, yeah, and I, Whatever. Uh, I did, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll tell you off there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you, you left a lasting legacy in my year there. Jimmy? Yeah, a lot of that was similar to me. I came in at 17, it taught me the right way to play football and to respect every single moment in the game and every single day is a privilege and an opportunity and you should make the most of that. Damien? Well, I just love the combative nature. And, yeah. and remember, as a, as a kid myself growing up and watching you play yeah. as, as a major performer in 84 and 85 and then the captaincy in 93, and yeah. we had our moments, but you always uh, yeah. always fronted up and, and always respected what we did on this side of the fence for what it's worth. And yes. there were some fractious moments, but you never, ever deviated off uh, what you were doing against yeah. what we were doing. It's the game, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, mate, I remember you as Bomber Thompson Electrics back in the day. Ray Jeans. Ray Jeans. In fact, I think I might have been there the other night you could you Name Bomber. Uh -huh. up, up that palm tree in the yeah. end at the nightclub. But anyway, <laughs> mate, uh, congratulations uh, on coming back. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you realise just how important it is for everybody in the footy industry. Um, you're lost to us. You're a very important figure mm. in this competition and in the lifestyle of footy. And uh, I think the four of us speak for the football world in saying, we're wrapped to see you back, mm. mate. No, thank you. And enjoy it. Yep, I will. Thank you very much. I appreciate what you've just said. One of the superstars of this game and one of the great blokes. Mark Bomber-Thompson, right here on Footy Classified.